And uh, I spoke to Juana and she asked us to kind of give a presentation and something that would be useful for all of you so that when you are looking at your clients, you can really spot all the issues and look for all the opportunities um, that are going to exist for you to grow your business. There are plenty of opportunities. There are so many times where I will have clients walking in and I can see that certain issues were not addressed, you know. So just we're hoping to get you guys to maybe see things from a different perspective, um, you know, getting out of, and I'm hoping this is good. Um, this so uh, the typical sales model, we want to get you guys thinking away from the typical sale model where you're focused on the transaction. I'm going to go and make, you know, close a deal and sell a policy or of some sort. And um, that's, that's the focus where you're focused on one issue. Somebody comes to you and says, I just need to make sure I have disability insurance. And, and you go ahead and you, you fulfill that request and you're not really looking at the bigger picture. Maybe you're just more worried about, yes, I've got to close that deal. When you start thinking that way, you, you lose a lot of opportunity. I'm going the wrong way. Here we go. So what we want to try to get you guys to do is to be a little bit more advisor focused, follow an advisor model, being the advisor and looking at all the issues and looking at the client's holistic needs, seeing what else is going on with them. And the way you do that is you create a comprehensive plan that's going to protect the client, their wealth, their business, and their loved ones. The advisor model also requires you to look at all the issues. And keeping in mind that you may be applicable to some of these issues, and there may be other advisors in some of the other issues, but by bringing in that team, you not only are becoming relevant to your client, you're becoming relevant to these other advisors, and, and there's going to be plenty of opportunity for all of you to continue to do business uh, we are very much of the philosophy of, of team and collaborative work, uh, work with our, our trusted advisors. And so these are the many issues that come up. But, so I'm going to focus just primarily today on business succession planning. And if there's time, Terry's also going to touch on some incapacity and long-term care. Uh, those are two issues that we feel are highly overlooked all the time, especially, especially the business um, the, the business succession plan. There's so much opportunity there. Um, you can make yourself stand out. Um, a lot of folks really miss a lot of opportunities there. So with that, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the issues that you might want to bring up for when you're you're talking to your client and you know discussing what would happen. The, what are the effects of failing to plan for death of an owner or a key employee? You might be in business with their, their, you know, their family members. That horrible kid who is just a complete mess is now your partner. Not a fun, fun idea. Not something that you want to be dealing with. Take a moment and think about who your partners are, and now think about who their kids are. It's pretty scary. So um, you might want to let them think about that maybe the business isn't going to operate once you know they pass away. So you want to get them thinking about who is going to operate that business. Is it going to be your partner? Is it a key employee? So looking at those issues. There may be loss of income to the family. There's usually disputes if you don't have this all sorted out in advance. And you could have, if one of you, if you have a partner and one of your partners passes away, they don't have their estate plan, it could be tied up in probate. Your business could be tied up in probate because you have a partner that doesn't have an estate plan. And lots of payment of unnecessary taxes. Tax, having your, your CPAs involved is hugely important. If you fail to plan for retirement, again, uh, you could have disputes regarding continued ownership and involvement of a retiring owner, um, involvement of outsiders in the business, uh, conservatorship. If one of your partners was to become disabled, you may have part of your business being managed in a conservatorship proceeding. If you think probate is bad, it's a million times worse. Are you finding that most of your clients don't own their businesses within trust? Yes. And how big of a problem, that's a big problem with probate, right? It's a huge problem. It's, first of all, there are fees that you pay for probate based on a gross, the gross estate, not the net, the gross estate, it's a percent of the gross estate, all right? And 
so in this situation with the business, not only do you get the percentage, but you get extraordinary fees for managing that business and winding it down, selling it. It's very complicated. You have folks who didn't know. I can give you an example of one family that came to me way too late, and they basically just put the, they did have it actually in the trust. This is a, this is a different example than that, but even in that scenario, they just put it in the trust and had no thought as to who was going to manage the business. They ran their business as if it was their you know, bank account paying for their medical tuition out of the business. And then finally, one kid was involved, another was not. And they had a, a $10 million contract with the government. Because it got tied up in litigation, they lost it in the company folding. It was a huge company, and because there was no planning, that company no longer exists today. And the kids have been with me nothing. So, is there any big hassle to owning your business within what your living trust? No, no. You want to own your, you want to own the shares yeah. in your trust. You want to have a good structure in the business for the continuation of the, of the business. So, so when we get to some of the other, I'm going to skip over a little bit of these issues: bankruptcy and divorce. They will also impact. Okay, really quickly, divorce. If you get divorced and now your spouse has been um, allocated those shares, you are now in business with your partner's disgruntled ex. Okay, so those are things to think about. Bankruptcy, same thing. You could have a creditor owning your business. So those are all things that we want to address. So how do we address those things? How do we handle it? By having a thoughtful pre-nup, post-nup, I like to call it, for your business. Okay? It's either going to be a partnership agreement, if it's a partnership, um, it's a buy-sell agreement, if it's a corporation, it's an operating agreement, if it's an LLC, different forms, it's the same thing, but just a different way. It's your agreement as to what will happen in every single one of these scenarios. That is your prenup. You follow that, you integrate that into your trust where you state in your trust that, that the trustee has to abide by the the agreement, and that's how you get a good plan. There's more to it, and this is where you guys come into play. Um, you know, we're going to talk a little about a bit more about it, but you also want there's you're also going to want to look at how you can create liquidity. So you can come up with a great plan, but that plan's going to be worthless if you're not going to get the tools. If you're not going to have the life insurance in play to allow a buyout, if you're not going to have key man insurance in play. Um, if you're not thinking about disability, and, and so, unfortunately sometimes there are situations where someone's not insurable, well, hopefully you're planning in other ways so that you can self-insure in some way, whether it's some other planning and saving for that event of purchase, what, you know, when you're buying, um, your, your agreement may state, for example, that your partner has to buy you out, but your partner may not have that money to buy you out. So that's where the insurance comes into play. I see so many businesses that don't even think about these issues. They have no clue. And these are great opportunities for all of you to really look at your clients, ask them if they've thought about their succession. Usually that's their biggest asset. And they haven't done anything for it. Everything's on a handshake, or it's they did something online, and it really isn't thought thought out and exactly what they're hoping for. So you want to try to establish some solutions. Um, like I said, you want to incorporate it into your estate plan. Um, you want to establish, like I said, solutions to implement agreed upon buyouts. Yes. Did you find that those uh, business owners just don't have any idea that this should be done? Or are they so busy and so focused on what they're <coughs> expert at they don't focus on this. Both, both, quite frankly. A lot of them are just too busy. Um, they haven't really gotten down. Oh, everything's going just fine. I had a client come to me recently saying he wanted an escape plan. And in the process of you know, asking all the issues, he broke down and was crying and realized the reason he came is because he had a nervous breakdown because he and his partner are falling apart. Mm -hmm. So we got into looking at what's going on with them and trying to to determine whether there's going to be a dissolution or can we come to some agreement and really put everything out in writing. I think we're going to be able to come to, to an agreement. It looks like that's what's going to happen. They're better together than apart. 
And so we're coming up with solutions for integrating key persons to work underneath them so that they're not working as hard, life insurance, all those different issues. Do you find there's a certain age range that's more acceptable to this? Um, you know, you know, it's 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 different. I, I would say when someone's bringing in a partner, I will start that dialogue. Um, when you bring it to their attention, they're almost always receptive. Almost always receptive. That's been my experience. They just never thought of it. They never thought of it. And a traditional estate planner is going to take you your plan and give you a trust and a will, and they're going to assign your stock over to the trust, and then that they're going to call it a day. But there's so much more to do. You have to really <coughs> get those issues out, and every plan's a little different. One plan may be a buy-sell agreement. The next plan could be that we're going to hire somebody, you know, to come in and start managing on the inside. There's all sorts of different techniques that can be used. Most, most successful companies doing $10 million or over, and they have two partners. They're pretty sophisticated. They have an accountant. They have an attorney. And most of them have done funding <coughs> and buy sales. The problem is most of them are not funded. They're, yes. very, they're very unfunded because somebody came to them and said, by the way, you each need $2 million. You're 55 and 65. It's going to cost you $60,000 to fund this. You look at whole life insurance, they don't realize there's other options. Exactly. So they turn around. I just was on a plane. I just saw two young guys, 45 and 50 to be very young, and they've got a nice size business. And I said, have you thought about it by yourself? Yeah, but it's too expensive. I said, you guys can buy a 15-year term policy for less than $5,000 for two of you for $2 million each. So it's, it's going to be half a million dollars for your litigation that yeah. comes so, following. 